Alright, clearly the first attempt this is. Definitely the first attempt that we've tried this. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 12 of season 3 of the PSR podcast. We have the usual hosts with us, Etiquette, Ian, Tucker. Clearly haven't said hello already. (laughs) Hello everyone. Hello again. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jordan97 as the other host, and then our guest, Ananan. Introduce yourself for the first time. Yeah, hello. For the first time, I guess. <laughs> uh, there's, there's always something when it's me. But anyway, uh, starting off uh, with some cool things that have happened over this past month. The Hargo Soul Silver tournament has finished. Rebentus finishing as the winner, and also as the best time winner, so... Massive congratulations to Rubentus. A a very close final in the end it ended up being between Rubentus and Bill uh, coming in second. Um, red doing red things, I guess. And then uh, Berber Volpal in third, not too far behind. So congrats to all of them. Uh, they, they all got a fairly decent prize pool. I, they ended up in around the $800 for the uh, total price pool in the end. Something like that. I just, I don't know. I'm not so, I don't know too many of the people in, in the DS side, but the third place winner, Beber Vorgal, um, they seem like a new runner. I don't, that's pretty huge to, to be in the finals here. So uh, yes, that is important. Wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, Tucker, because you would know more than me, but yeah, uh, like Maybe like more than half of the entrants are like French runners, and they're all like pretty new. Like some of them came like year or two years ago, but like Beber is one of the ones that are uh, just coming out in 2023 to play. Nice. So yeah, that's cool. Good job to Beber and as well as Rubentis and Bill. Indeed, shout out to them. Uh, not the only DS things that have happened. There has also been some bounties announced for the Diamond Pearl glitch list, Plat any percent and Plat glitch list, Hard Gold Soul Silver any percent and Hard Gold any percent glitches, and then Black White one any percent. Is there a reason why no Black White two? Or um, well, they just don't like all it. these bounties are mostly one guy that Slayer has a DP glitch list one. But yeah, mm. it's. I'm. I'm guessing like these are the categories that are like, they haven't been, like, recorded in like a bit. Well, it, the the timing of this was kind of funny because, the day that these bounties dropped were, was a day right after, another white two record. Was set, so maybe that was why. But, yeah, every basically everything except like white two. Challenge mode and any percent, and also plat round two have a bounty on them right now. So there's one for Paris alt main. Okay. Yeah, there's also one for <laughs> Paris alt main because I like to know the story was, for that. Yeah, I wanted to see Paris alt main. <laughs> it's really yeah. nice. uh, like pay for what you want to see, I guess. Um, but yeah, with uh, all the cool things that have been mentioned from the past month. Uh, some pretty big things that happened in Fire Relief Re and the reason why Ananan is here. Uh, Fire Relief Re in any percent actually has like glitches. It's not Fire Relief Re in any percent silent glitchless type thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I'll uh, l- let you, you go ahead. Some... Okay, sorry. Uh... Like Interflotion has found a way to uh, do the mail glitch in Fire Red Leaf Green, which was like previously just not thought to be possible. Like everybody thought it's just like a sapphire only thing where I could um, thief off a mail from like your partner Pokemon in a double battle, and then you could like write something in the last mail slot, and that would like corrupt the overworld. And with that, you could like catch an early tenter. Yeah, everybody knows the current sapphire route or the glitched route and then for in this game this is apparently fixed but uh, lucky Flotion has found a way by using 
knock off and recycle where you could like pretty much do the same like you'd override one of the mail slots permanently and then you could like if you give all of your other mons a mail and then give like the last mon also a mail you could corrupt something else and in this case you can corrupt uh stuff in the pc which is really nice because you can just put something in like a certain slot in the pc and then you write something in the mail and then that corrupts the mon in the pc so uh people got together and like try to find a way like how do we get recycle as fast as possible how do we get knockoff as fast as possible and there's not really that many options for those moves in this game like there's only really miss the mime which learns recycle or you shove up money for a porygon <laughs> yeah while you get a porygon which is like i don't know how many coins way too many yeah so yeah what you can see here is like gp going for the mr mime trade like mr mime is only available as an in-game trade and you have to trade an arbor for it and then the mon for knockoff i think the fastest one you can get is just the in-game trade Farfetch'd, which learns knockoff at level 21. And yeah, so everybody thought like, how do we get to that point as fast as possible, where we get like the mails, where we get uh, our level 33 Mr. Mime and our level 21 Farfetch'd. And, get, like, and find like any double battle that just works for that, where you can just do like the recycle knockoff and... One thing I forgot to mention was the you need like one of your mons needs to hold a berry and it needs to proc the berry and then you switch into Mr. Mime with like the Pokemon that held the berry and then you use knockoff on the Mr. Mime which then gets rid of the mail that it held. Like that was one of the things that just people didn't know about that you could knock off mails. And then you would recycle, and when you recycle, you get back the Orin Berry, or like the berry that the first Pokemon held. And that just overrides the mail slot permanently, and that lets you do like funky corruption stuff. And so yeah, so a way was found for this, and then it was like, how do we actually use this? Like, obviously the fastest thing to do is just get to the Hall of Fame as fast as possible. Like, just activate the Hall of Fame cutscene pretty much. And since I don't know how exactly the arbitrary code execution works to like just trigger that. Um, but you have to do like a certain amount of things. Like you, the first route was you need to get uh, a Mr. Mime to get like a certain amount of HP and attack EVs. And then corrupt it with like one mail and then you would just take the corrupted Mr. Mime, swap it to box one, and then just swap it with one of the mons, and then just that triggers the Hall of Fame cutscene. You can see it like it was the end of the run, pretty much. Yeah, and, so, and the re I, guess, I guess the reason why Mr. Mime was used is because it has a fixed trainer ID, and so... it Yeah, and also fixed yeah. stats. You like, can't, it's you always can't the same. manipulate your trainer ID, yeah. Yeah, so. exactly. It's always the same Mr. Mime. That's really, really useful for this. Yeah, it's just a consistent um, run as well with the Mr. Mime, because you have to use it quite a bit. Exactly. Like it, it was just very obvious that you could just use one of the income trades that you have to get anyways, and just corrupt that, and then, yeah. So, the first route was pretty much you, you get an Abra somewhere, and then you just level up the Abra, uh, level up the Mr. Mime to 33, and then you do a double battle, and yeah, everything's perfect. There were two different possibilities to get to like the Mr. Mime or to get the Abra. Uh, the first one was what Markwing looked into, which was buying Abra in Celadon with coins. Uh, the problem of that is that it like pretty much already done through like the entire route. Like you already passed Rock Tunnel, you already passed, I don't know, Boat, stuff like that. Or you just get a lot of experience. But then you just get the uh, like level, I think level seven or level nine, Mr. Mime. You get, and you would teach it Psychic, which you can get in Saffron because you need to get through Saffron anyways. And then you would just fight like a lot of optionals until you get to level I think thirty or what it was. And then use like a few rare candies and to get to recycle. 
So I think the first run done with that route was like 135 or something. So like already 25 minutes faster than the current glitchless record. So people were doubting the the possible uh, like the, how good the glitch could actually be, like how fast you could actually activate it. Including myself, I was doubting that it's actually faster than the glitchless route <laughs> at uh, first look because it just looked like you need so much setup to do it. But yeah, the first round was like a 135. And I myself sat down and looked at the other option, which was not getting the Abra and Celadon, but uh, catching a Wild Abra. <laughs> Let me tell you, that is not fun, <laughs> but it is a lot faster. Because there is there are like two routes where you can get the Abra, which is one of them is Route 24 and the other one is Route 25, so right after Nugget Bridge. There's like level 9, level 11, and 13, level 13 Abras there, and they all know like only no teleport, so either you just try to catch them with one ball, or they're gonna teleport away. So that is just part of the route now. <laughs> Um, luckily you get a great ball for that, so it's like a 41% catch. And the other thing is because you kind of want the Abra to be as high a level as possible because uh, pretty much the level the Abra has is the level you get the Mr. Mime at whenever you trade it. So for that we, I don't know, if Jordan, if you can go back to like 30, I don't know, 33 minutes, I guess, roughly. Somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah, that is perfect. Yeah, that is right off the bridge. So, like, we use this grass, and we catch a level ten, 10 mon in. Oh, he didn't have a repel the drone. Okay, that is perfect. <laughs> Usually, what you would do is, uh, you catch level ten mon, you swap the level ten mon to the front, you use a repel, and that pretty much means that you can only get like level ten or higher encounters. For this grass, it is. Oh wow, he actually gets a level nine armor. That's crazy. Um, it's like 10% for a level 11 Abra, it's 1% for a level 13 Abra, it's 4% for a level 9 Abra. So, you kind of just want to get the higher level Abras, and there's also like 20% for each of the bugs. So if you just do the repel trick, like swapping the level 10 mount to the front and using a repel, and then just turn thing around in the grass, you always get like level 11 or level 13 Abra. And that just makes like the Mr. Mime section a lot faster. And also makes the Abra encounter actually more likely. Because you also just need like a few catches in this category anyways. Like you need to fill up your party and you need the Mr. Mime in the box. So you need like a total of seven catches. And so it was just really convenient just catching something on Rod 4 and using that for to make the Abra encounter a lot better. And then you pretty much just do like the, the regular route, you just use War Total until you get to Vermilion, and then you do the Mr. Mime trade, and then you just use Mr. Mime uh, for the rest of the run until you get to uh, Celadon, which is where we then buy the mails, we would buy the HP up and the protein that we need, because we need the we need to get the Mime to um exactly 83 hp ev and exactly 10 at or 20 20 it was 20 attack evs yeah so we'd fight like specific trainers like machops and i don't know other stuff with, um, like machop was just the most useful one and we get the celadon we'd buy an hp up and a protein which yeah just does what we need them to do and after that, you you still need to get the spear at this point because as I only talked about Abra and Mime until the, until now. But the convenient part is that left of Celadon, there's this one grass where it's thirty percent for spear to show up. And those spears are either level twenty or level twenty-two. And because you only need a level twenty-one far-fetched, it's like. You just catch one of those and trade, and then either you are you already have knockoff or you just level it up one time, which is really fast to do. Like the alternative would be like catching something on, I think route eleven is right of a million, 
But the highest level speed there is like 17, so it still need to like fight a few options as as far fetched, and that's just not not fast enough really. So yeah, it's just oh, it's actually catching that interesting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Like you saw, he only has four things in a party. He has the magic up in in the PC, I think, or like one one he has in the PC. And yeah, he needs to swap the one with the Mister Mime later to do like the corruption. All right, where was I? I have no idea. <laughs> um. So yeah, you like, would yeah, getting the Spiro and then you have to trade. Yeah, it. exactly. Like you'd, you'd get the Spiro, you'd get the you trade for the Farfetch'd. Like you have to bike back to Vermilion, get the Farfetch'd, and then you'd like just fight whatever double battle you just find fastest. And the fastest one for this, even though there's like one right on screen, literally right now, um, the fastest one to do is still the one on Route Eight because. Um, the double battle you see there, they have like a, I think it's in Nine Tails and Rapidash, and a ra and exactly a Rapidash, yeah. So I mean, not that scary, honestly, for Mister Meyer and War Turtle because both are just like they're not gonna take a lot of damage from I don't know Ember or whatever they have. So it wouldn't be that horrible, but it's just you also need to win the fight pretty much, unless you're Tast and you can also lose the fight. Yeah, I believe Tass uh, does fight that double, actually. Yeah. At least the, the latest version of the Tass, which was probably yeah. changed because the roots changed, but... <laughs> yeah, we, I can talk later. a little bit about the Tass later as well. Yeah. But... Yeah, you just do, like, any double battle. You try to win the fight, and you... Just head to, like, the closest PC that you can find, which is the one in Lavender. And then you do uh, funky stuff there. I don't know. Uh, John, if you want to jump forward to the double battle, which is like, I don't know, four or five yeah. minutes further. Yeah, right after the trade. Oh, now that one, this one. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So, one thing uh, I did not mention yet is that um, because obedience is a thing with in game trades. Uh, and Mr. Mime being at level 33, there's a chance that it just doesn't use the move you want it to use. So that's also one of the, the funny parts about this, that Mr. Mime might just randomly do nothing or randomly just attack the Jigglypuff for the Clefairy instead of uh, actually using Recycle, which you want it to use. But yeah, you just saw there like he... He procked the berry, now he's gonna try to knock off the Mr. Mime. Uh, unfortunately, he got follow me from the Clefairy, which is also a thing. The Clefairy is just a huge troll in this. Like, it can use Minimize, it can use Sing, it can use um, Follow Me. Yeah, does it have Encore or is that the uh, Jigglypuff? I think it has Pound. I think none of them actually have Encore. Oh, okay. But yeah, so now he gets recycled, he recycles the Orange Bear and that just overrides the meal. And then he just has to finish the fight with like, so he has Psybeam and Magical Leaf at that point. Like, that's the one thing about the, about using Mime for the rest of the run is you have a really awesome moveset. Like you have confusion whenever you trade for it. And Mr. Mime with like 100 base special attack and I think it's like 20... IV, somewhere around there, 23 I think, 23 IV in special attack, like it's always set nature, set IVs as well, and you get the traded experience, like it just levels so fast, it's actually insane. Yeah, you, you do have to fight a few optionals, like some hikers, mainly because of also getting to the HP EVs you want to be, you want to get that, so you can do the corruption. So, yeah, but still, it's like really fast. And now he's gonna do like one big mini. He's gonna pretty much fill his entire party with males. Uh, doesn't really matter what you write in those, it's just. 
the first thing you find, which is usually just armor. <laughs> and the thing we do in Sapphire, like the item duping, where you give uh, one of your mons like uh, an item and then you try to give it a mail, and then it like tries to give it the mail, but doesn't really give it the mail, but still gives you like the item back that he held. It's and we you're gonna see it here. Like he's gonna give it HP up, and then he's gonna give it a mail, and then suddenly he has like one less mail in the bag, but he has an HP up. Uh, yeah, you're just turning mail into items. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's pretty useful. Um, probably one of the things that's gonna be used for the catch them all route, or maybe my glitch round too, if somebody ever finds time to route it, I guess. But yeah, you like you just dupe a lot of HP ups to get to get to the 83 EVs that you need, and then you just use the protein and, and the HP ups, and then you, yeah, do like the the fun corruption part in the lab and the PC. For I, I don't know how exactly the corruption itself works, but what I know is that like you need to get like a certain value or whatever on whatever you're corrupting that just um, activates the Hall of Fame cutscene then. So yeah, there's like quite a few factors like the, the EVs, which is what you see Chippy doing here. Uh, he's yeah. going to name the boxes specific names as well. And then the phrase, I guess, that you do oh, yeah, the true. want the wandering mail. I think exactly, it's called. Yeah, it's, yeah that's it's very also... important as well. That's also one thing, yeah. So yeah, you put the mime into that specific slot, and then you name the boxes. It's similar to like what you do in Emerald, where you do like a lot of box name, and then you put yep. a very specific Abra in a very specific slot. Uh, it's pretty much like that, but yeah, in this game instead. Uh, yeah. Luckily, in this game, it's only three boxes, and yeah. one of them, like the box three, is really easy to name. So this does not take long at all. It's really just remember or trying to remember, I guess, like how you have to name them. And then all he has to do is he is gonna give the magic cup uh, the mail, which then corrupts the Mr. Mime. Like he's gonna write wandering here. And that changes the Mr. Mime. He also is gonna take off all the all the mails because one thing you also need is you need like at least three mons in box one. I don't know why, but it's just how it works. And it also makes the Hall of Fame cutscene a little bit faster. So he just deposits everything here, and then he goes to move. He's gonna grab the corrupted Mr. Mime. And then he just Puts it here, swaps, swaps again, and Hall of Fame. Actually crazy to think about. But yeah, like this... This has been found out like three or four weeks ago now, so... Actually crazy to think that with how old this game actually is, like it's been Almost close years, to 20 yeah. years, yeah. yeah. And... Since... Four weeks now we have a glitch category, so that is epic. And so yeah, that was like the original route, like what I came up with. Um, where I just use like, I called it early Abra, I guess, because you'd get the Abra early. <laughs> huh? Obviously. Um, and I've pushed that run down to like a 120 to something my goal was around like sub 120 and for that you just need like a really fast abra catch like the abra encounter is around 20 percent and the older boy is 41 percent like i still literally save for the abra catch because if it breaks out you pretty much just either you try to toss pokeballs at the next one or you just give up and try for a new run it's just so much worse with a pokeball compared to a great ball and the other thing is you can also just die to run to some random encounters you find. Like, there's also, like, Pidgeys in the grass. They can outspeed you and you can't run away. And 
yeah, lot, lot, lot of stuff that can go wrong. But it's definitely a lot faster. And also, like, the Spiro Catch can take a little bit of time. Um, and then, like, I think it was actually two days ago or three days ago. Um, I think Gifex was the one who found this, but yeah, it should be him. That instead of corrupting, like, Mr. Mime in the box, you could just create something, quote-unquote, in, in, the, in the box. And then just use that to do to trigger the Hall of Fame cutscene. So, New Route, which is, like, two days old now, um, has, like, a lot of optimized stuff in it. Like, in you do different experience routes, you have to catch one month less because... You obviously only need six months now to do this uh, entire mail glitch and PC glitch or PC corruption. Because you don't need anything anymore in the box that you have to corrupt. And the third thing that is also improved in this is that you don't have to do EV training anymore. So no more uh, HP up getting, no more protein getting. You know, like you just try to get recycle and knock off as fast as possible and then do the corruption. The corruption is also slightly changed because you... It's not like you corrupt one thing and that just warps you to the Hall of Fame or that triggers the Hall of Fame cutscene. But you have to do like multiple steps in the corruption. I don't know, you can probably just quickly show it off. It's towards the end. So, um, okay, that was a bit too far. Uh, do you think? Yeah, that's like that double battle. Let's get into and... mail. A yeah, bit exactly. after this, like, or nah, it's it's perfect. Like you still do yeah. like the entire mail stuff, but in this case, you actually give Mister Mime one of the mails. Um, so you can like corrupt. Like if you if it give all of the five other monsters mail, and then try to give Mister Mime mail, it's gonna do like the item duping stuff, and you don't want that. You actually want to do corruption. So what you do here is like you put special stuff here. I actually don't know what I, what I actually put. It's like meets Abra Scatter, I think, is the, fir is the first one. Or meets Babe Scatter, close enough. <laughs> and that These creates... are so funny. <laughs> it's, the names are awesome. <laughs> it's just you've got to find a way to remember those. And yeah, then you go to the PC and then you have a weird Pokemon in in the third box. Also, I have to do like you still have to do the um, the naming. Still the same. God bless, it's still the same names. Like I learned them once, like a week ago, and they're still the same. So I just have to like learn them again. That's very nice. Although I did mess this one up, I remember that. I was very sad about that. There's a few there's a few disadvantages of this new route because you have to do the corruption takes longer, but you also don't have to do the EV training on Mr. Mime. So yeah. you want to kinda talk a little bit about that and how we kinda got to the 33 because it's a bit of a convoluted approach. Yeah, I mean Or initially honestly, I guess it was. Uh yeah, initially you just have to fight like you have to find specific trainers that give you like exactly the attack and HP EVs that you need. Like you need like Let's say 3, 13, 23, whatever, HP Vs, and then with HP ups you get to the 83. And the same for Protein, where you need like 0 or 10 or 20, and then get to the 20. Um, it was not easy finding routes for that, because you'd have to also... Um, like, you have to watch out for the EVs. You can't really hit the optionals that you don't want to hit. And so that was just great I choose you babe yeah that is a good one <laughs> this is just this is just wild this yeah is... like th this this looks awesome this, uh, that's apparently an ivy saw whatever you hear an ivy saw cry there and then you do like one more corruption that just pretty much creates what you create usually with the old corruption I had like, no, no idea about the words that I use. 
it's kind of weird. But yeah, as I, as I said, like with the old route, you'd have to get to a certain, um, like you'd have to fight certain trainers. And the thing was, the routes between level 11 and level 13 Abra were, was also different because obviously you want to like optimize whatever trainers you fight. So that was like, you have a lot of options. I gotta say that in this game, you have so many different options to fight, op uh, to find experience. I think in this route, you fight like you fight two optionals on boat before boat rival. You fight one after boat rival. You fight the hiker on route, whatever that is, like right off uh, Cerulean. Nine, like it's like the, the one yeah. hiker you usually have to run bike, you just fight him instead. And then there's there's like a lot of hikers in Rock Tunnel that you can just fight. And they have like either my chops or just Geodudes and Gravelers. Geodudes and Gravelers don't really matter because they only give you defense. And yeah, you just like try with try to somehow get to level 30 or level 31 while also grabbing the HP EVs. And the one thing was, when I looked at it, I was like, maybe I also do like the other double battle, the Nine Tails Rapid Dash one. But it was just a lot faster doing the Clefairy Jigglypuff one because those also give HP EVs. And with those four HP EVs you get, you, also, you get to exactly 13. So it, yeah, it, it just worked really out well. really nicely. There's like also like stuff on Rod 8, like there's, there's a lot of trains where Mr. Mime just has like, it's really easy to get a lot of experience with, with it. Like just Rhyma and Muck and Coughing and all pretty high level and they just give a lot of experience and everything just dies to like Confusion or Psybeam or Magic Leaf. Like again, it's it's an insane moveset. Yeah. It gets boosted experience, like it's, it's a dream. It was really easy to route, I want to say. Oh, uh, I mean, you had to find a way to do the to make the entire EV stuff work, and I'm so happy that, that that is actually no longer necessary. Like, it's only about getting experience now. It's only about hitting the levels you need to hit. So, yeah. There's also one thing I forgot to mention: the early routes still did like regular early game stuff with Warthodl, like just to. I don't know, Brock a uh, Squirtle, do Misty a Squirtle, do like regular Misty level 20, uh, do Bridge Rival, do entire bridge, then catch Diablo and then just continue on towards until you get to Vermillion. Um, the thing was, since you kind of want to save as many candies as possible, I don't know who mentioned this, but somebody mentioned that level 19 Misty might actually be better for this. And sadly it is better for this. But the fight is a lot worse if you have one level low because you just need level 19 because you get bite and just need bite for a Stami. Otherwise, you have no chance of getting past it. So yeah, so that's like two turns to the fight, and then yeah, it's, it's like damage. one or two turns yeah. more. You have like worse defense ranges, uh, worse defensive ranges. You just take a little bit more damage usually. Same for uh, bridge rival, like a lot more. Squirrels just have to heal mid fight. Offensive range is also slightly worse on bridge rival. But it's all worth because you save the one candy that you usually would use in water. So you have three candies available for the like menu before the double battle. So you'd either get like it's you either catch a level 20 Spiro candy that one once and then try to get Mr. Mime to level 31 and candy Mr. Mime twice. Or if you catch a level 22 Spiro, you just get Mr. Mime to level 30 and then candy Mr. Mime three times. And yeah, so that's great. Like usually you'd always have to do like get Mr. Mime to level 31, use the candies on Mr. Mime and fight an optional with the Farfetch'd if you have a level 21, uh, level 20 Farfetch'd. You'd fight like the Butterfree Trainer and then you'd need like a little bit of more experience from Violent Counters. So it just lost like a minute or one and a half minutes just because he had, he got unlucky <laughs> on the Spear Catch. So, 
I don't know. I mean, it, it's roughly, it's not as bad anymore because you can just candy the, the Farfetch now instead of having to fight the Butterfree Trainer, but you still have to fight an extra trainer as Mr. Mime, so uh, you get to level 31. So, like, if you look at this run, I lost a minute in the double battle, and that was purely because I had to fight an, an extra trainer. It's not like the, uh, the double battle was bad or anything, it was just me getting the wrong Spiro, pretty much. And that's maybe one of the things I might still want to find a way to make better. Like, maybe being able to set up a repel trick as well, same as we do for the Abra. But there's not really a good way to find, like, a level 22 Mon. That you can use for that, or level twenty-one one, I guess. I think that I think you wouldn't be repelling away too much there, if I recall correctly, but I could be wrong. Yeah, you'd also have to like. The thing is, it doesn't really make the encounter more likely then, because there's a lot of high-level encounters that are like rare, or somewhat rare. There's like radicates and st and stuff, so it could also get a little bit scary if you were to try to do that. But it would. Honestly, it would be worth it. Like, it's just a three minute of time save. On the other hand, you could just get lucky. Like, it's 30% for Spiro in the, in the grass on routes. I don't know, 16, I think. That is. Like, where you catch the Spiro. Yeah. Uh, it's like 20% for level 20, and it's 10% for level 22 Spiro. So, if you just win the one in three, you're just a happy man. Easy time save, pretty much. It's. Um. Yeah, I, I have a question. I've been kind of following this sort of not just casually. Um, there was talk about manipping the Abra. It's what's do you know any of how that's going and uh, whether that's going to be a viable strategy? I think people have looked into it. Um, but the thing is, fire red leaf green save and quit manips are just they're not, they're not good. <laughs> they're just not really viable. Yeah, it's like. Either double or triple frame perfect inputs, depending on like how fast you want the manip to be. Or you like you could literally just get lucky and get an upper first try. <laughs> like this <laughs> one had. And like a manip takes I think about a minute or whatever to do. If you like because you can't really like mash A or whatever and then just have a continue timing and then do like certain movement. You'd have to wait through the entire intro and then like press either L or A, I don't exactly remember, on a very specific frame and then also press continue on a very specific frame and then you still have to do like certain movement. Because you have to, when you like soft reset or you have to hard reset actually, you need to hit a certain uh, seed and then also a certain frame to make the minute work and it's just not easy. <laughs> Taz can do it, humans probably can't do it. And like if you fail it once or twice or whatever, it's just not really that worth anymore. I guess <laughs> in an ideal world, you would, like if somebody ever makes a manip for this, please make a manip for level 13 Abra that holds a twisted spoon. Yeah, because that that was, saves, that's what they were going for. That's what would save a lot of time. Because Twisted Spoon just eliminates like pretty much all the ranges that Mr. Mime has. Which would be very helpful. Like you could just play a lot more aggressive with Mr. Mime. Like there's a few fights where like for example um Alicia, like the first trainer right after you do the Vermilion section, whenever you head towards Rock Tunnel. She has two Oddishes and two Bell Sprouts, and both Oddishes are range and they only have like status moves and sweet scent so you kind of want them to be one he KOs, but since they aren't you just have to play it safe and have to use substitute also didn't mention you have substitute which is again <laughs> insane to have just get it for free um also another reason why mr mime is just awesome why i actually should just route an old main mr mime at some point yeah it's moves that's pretty wild it's so good. Like I've look, I've done alt main runs that just have to like get substitute from one of the like I don't know how to call them. There's like people that teach you random moves and oh tutors. Yeah. One of them, yeah, move tutors exactly. And they, one of them gives the substitute, and it's just really useful for a lot of fights. And also for this, like the best example is on boat rival 
Boat Driver Ivysaur. Loves to spam Steep Powder. And Poison Powder and Bleach Seed. If you are at like really high HP and it's usually just gonna use um Vine Whip if it sees a kill with it. Or like sometimes it just randomly decides to go for it. So you pretty much what you do is you go into Ivysaur at full HP, you substitute immediately. Also have insane speed. That's another benefit of Mr. Vine. You just don't speed everything. So you drop a sub and then Ivysaur just spams Sleep Powder until you kill it with Confusion. You need like two or three Confusions. Uh, it's a really good fight. Like, pretty good. Like you're level like 15 or whatever, level 16 for the Ivysaur and you just... It's level 20 and it gives you like a full level for free because you just... Yeah. Got, got Sleep Powder spammed. Pretty nice. So yeah, Twisted Spoon would definitely help. So you can like do more of those fights, like pretty much all the Oddishes that you find, all the Bulbasaurs that you find. You kind of just want to use sub, so you don't get status by them. But yeah, problems would be solved with, with a Twisted Spoon. Or just with a level 13 Abra. I think I've had each once in like, I don't know, 15 Abras or whatever. Seen one Twisted Spoon, I realized the Twisted Spoon too late. I, like, I realized that the moment I started to trade, <laughs> it was kind of sad. Um, and I think the first ever run that I did got a level 13 Abra. But yeah, like usually you're just expecting level 11 Abra, no Twisted Spoon, and just do the regular route. Yeah. And so that's what like humans can do. And Tess obviously has it a lot easier because why get a Mr. Mime with Recycle when you can just use a Clefairy and use Metronome and get Recycle with that. And yeah, it's actually way faster. I think the current version of the Tess is like 54 minutes, somewhere around there. And you yeah, like, you right. just, you just use Squirtle until you get to Moon, then you get Clefairy, and then just use Clefairy with Punch and Kick, I guess. I don't know. Until you get to Metronome, and then just do the double battle with with Jading and Metronome. And Metronome Recycle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. Actually, Very cool. awesome that we yeah. actually uh, awesome that we have a new main category now with this. Also, I don't know the route is right, it's right really easy. You still have Squalmanip, which is just bad. Everybody knows that who ran Fire and Leaf Green. But Brock is still the same, um, so also bad. Misty is a little bit worse because we do level nineteen Misty now. And then once you have the Abra, well, the Abra catch is also bad. Um, you're pretty much just smooth sailing like this. As soon as you get the Mr. Mime, there's not really anything that can kill you. Like, you can always just play safe with Substitute. You can buy up to seven Super Potions now with this route. Um, so you can't really die somewhere. I've died once with Mr. Mime, which was like exactly the first train on boat. Uh, you fight him a drop and that one has low kick and low kick if he crits just kills you. If you have the level 11, uh, Mr. Mime. But other than that, like, it's... There's not really that much that can kill you. And there's... Also routes that I'm actually currently... Um, trying to write a, a guide for, like, a quote-unquote beginner route. Where you do get the Moon Revive and you still do, like, regular level 20 Misty. Just take the time loss on the end section of the run, pretty much. And it's like it's pretty easy to do. Like you, there's only really squirrel manip you have to do. And after that, it's just trying to get lucky, trying to survive. And honestly, with a revive, it's not that difficult. Oh yeah, I, we saw this at the beginning. I didn't really mention this, but Diglett Cave is also fun because while you do have a repel. There are some Dark Trios in here, or like all the Dark Trios are level 30, 29 and level 31. And they can have Arena Trap and actually got one in my PP. 
I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have arena trap, so... You kinda just, yeah, have to deal with this, I guess. Oh, it has an accuracy dropping move as well. Yeah, and it has, like, if you find one that doesn't have arena trap, it's really unlikely that it can actually run away from it because it's just so fast. And it also has sand tomb. So <laughs> if you get, like, you can't run away and you get sand tomb, you're like, okay, dude. Fine, I'm still gonna try to kill it. Whatever. So yeah, that's that's also part of the game. I gotta say, a lot of my runs have gotten like trio less. I've had one run yesterday, I got, I got like three on the way back, so a lot is possible. But on average, I'd say you get like less than one per run. And it's not like run over or whatever if you actually run into one. Like you can always just heal to like save HP for. Uh, for the cave, you can also just heal to full if you want to. The one thing you need to watch out for is that you need one Pokemon that is able to proc a berry on the double battle. That's pretty much all you have to watch out for. So yeah, that's pretty much it about this, I guess. Unless I'm forgetting something. If I could just oh. thought about something, but I, I <laughs> couldn't have been that important, I guess. No, I mean, if you've got it on the top of your head, you may as well mention it. Nah, I, I forgot about it already. Oh. It can't, it can't be that important. <laughs> yeah, fair yeah, enough. Ah, no, no, oh. I remember. Yeah, oh, okay, like, good. About, it is important. I about, I don't, nah, it, it's not that important, but like it was pretty much just about what that I actually want to use. It was like a few people tried to route uh, Charmander. Just because it's like the thought it's easier to get past like the first and to get to the million pretty much. Hmm. Um but the issue was how do you beat Misty? And with like the current Charmander out, you'd still have to you would still have to double candy for Misty and then fight Misty at level 26 or something. And you couldn't do that because it like the reason why we would run Charmander is so we can save the candies and or use all of them on Mr. Mime if possible. But the thing, like, people thought, like, yeah, let's just use Mr. Mime for Misty. And whenever they did that, they realized, oh, wait, <laughs> we there's still like this obedience issue that we have to go through because Misty gives obedience for level 30, and if you don't beat Misty, you only have obedience for level 10 months. So. <laughs> That was also just out of the window immediately. So yeah, that's how we ended up with using Warthoddle, pretty much. It's a shame that there's not really anything else that you can catch. That would maybe be, uh, maybe be better. Yeah, it's just water. It's still like you have Torrent. You get water pulls really early yeah. on. It's It's really nice. Uh, is is that now everything? I think I mentioned everything. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Solid, solid. So I guess as a quick question to the other hosts: uh, Do you want to stick uh, stick with the break before going to the noted runs? Because there is a lot of noted runs, like a lot. Uh, or <laughs> do you want to try and power through? I'm good to move on, but yeah, also okay to. I'm, I'm okay to with work. whatever. To you guys. I say let's power through. Let's power through then. All right. All right. Uh, and we'll we'll start off with uh, Gen One to Three stuff. So, I. Yeah, we'll go th we'll go through these. There's a lot of them. We'll go through them fairly quickly yeah. here. But first, we have uh, Grogear with uh, second place on Red Glitchless. Uh, 14504. Uh potion before champ. Um lost losing the sub one sub one forty five. Um so that um I presume that means that that put him out of red bar. Right, he also got like sky attack. So. Yeah. Like he was at, he was at really bad HP after Hydro Pump and he just wanted to save it. 
And I think he said he would have been fine if he didn't get Sky Attack to one. He would still have gotten like a really high 144. Oh, but... so you just set up the once and then, okay, yeah. And yeah, yeah, like you, you spec and then you of quick the LKSM and then you set up the X accuracy on the ride on. And hope that it doesn't kill you with, with, with Fury Attack. So that's just, yeah, that's just slower setup then, yeah. Yeah, like, you can see at the splits, like, he was clearly at, like, mid-144 pace. And then he also got a uh, Fury Attack miss. Like, even if he, if he gets, like, a two-turn Fury Attack, I think he might still get the 144. Like, just the worst possible outcome for champ. <laughs> it was really painful for him. Like, he, he was grinding for that 144 for so long. And, yeah, like, that ending does things to somebody. That was rough to watch. Just like the ultimate taunt. Got a feel for the guy. Yeah, he's yep. like he's so broken. He's doing Clefable uh, runs now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still, still second place, I guess. But yeah. Obviously, like, his goal was 144 for such a long time, and I guess he's gonna go for it at some point, but it's probably gonna take a little bit until he actually tries to go for it again. Yeah. No harm ever in the break, especially after something like this. Because even, even if it is a new PB, uh, PB, being close to, like, the mini barrier, uh, mini barrier and the mini barrier you were trying to beat, yeah, not, not ideal. Yeah. Go on to the next one. Now, yeah, next is Jadiwi. Um, been on a bit of a tear in the Gen 1 to 3 uh, scene. This is uh, Red Classic record beating a. Uh, was this beating Exarion? Or did Exarion get. Oh, yeah. Pokegai, oh, Poke that's right, yeah. Yeah, Pokegai got record in the Barry Blitz event. Yes, that's right. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, this tops Pokegai's time. Uh, with a 155, 46, so slightly, slight improvement, 10 second improvement over Poke Guy's time. Uh, fairly average Nidoran by the looks of it, with decent special, but otherwise, um, just good execution. Yeah, not the leader you would expect, really, to get like a 155, but he's good at the game. Like, also, like, if you look at the splits, it was a really solid early game. Like. 27 mid 27 moon with i think with hiker and with paris that's very strong just saving a lot of time like really good fly split especially 48 surge is also very very good and just yeah kept not dying i guess which is not easy in this game seems like he did make up quite a bit of time in the last couple of fights as well Go to the next one. Sure. All right, so next we have another classic um, noted around. This is Primal Pizza with a third place in yellow classic. Um, I don't know the hex notation here, but FD9E Nidoran. If anyone wants to explain what the DVs are there, I do not know. Perfect attack. Um, Really good. I think special is last. I yeah. want to say the nine is speed. So it'd be basically either perfect or very close to perfect for attack, defense, and special, and then above average speed. Okay. Thank you. The old school knowledge from Medica. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the, um, yep, yeah, pretty good run. Um, really solid Elite Four. Uh, missed a lot of rock slides. So. Uh, congrats to Primal on that one. Well done. All right, next we're back to Jadiwi with Sapphire Glitchless second place. Um, just getting the 156 with a 156.55. 
Uh, so for this one, I believe it's... Sh is it still Shiru that has record? It's Wave. It's oh, it's Wave. wave. Okay, I, I'm so behind. Um, but yeah, this is uh, another really great time in Sapphire. Yeah, just overall like a really solid run. 156 is crazy good. Yeah, and then Gunner, um, back to uh, doing round two. Uh, it's good to see him back. He uh, got second place in E4 round two with a 328-28, um, which is just off of record by about half a minute. Um, one of the better um, end games that you'd see in this category. Uh, insane Elite Four to end, according to him. Uh, he got early Pikachu, so I guess he didn't go to Power Plants. So that's that's obviously good, assuming all your other catches go well. Um, and then his Sevy Islands weren't particularly great. I don't know if that was round one of Sevy or round two, but he's been really plugging away at this, and it's good to see a really great time on this one. Yeah, I don't remember his E4 entry time. I think it was like a high 240, like 245x or something. And Wave has like a 237, so he was like three minutes behind at the start of E4. And so like insanely good uh, E4 and post game. Like, don't think everybody, uh, anybody can beat this. I think this he literally said this himself. He said he is he beat like Pokey guys post game by 20 seconds. Not including the Abra time save. So, and people thought Oh, yeah, that, there's like, an Abra that's used now. Yeah. Like, people said that Poke Guy's post game was pretty much just perfect. And he saved 20 seconds on that. That's how good the run was. Or, like, the, the end of the run was. The uh -huh. yeah. All right. I guess we can yeah. move on to DS stuff. So. We have a Tokyo. familiar face for the first run here. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is Jadiri. Jadiri did some Pearl any percent manipulus and got a really spectacular run here. Um, a world record. Did this in 59.46. Uh, I believe there is no 100 as before this run. He actually had the previous world record. And this is also during a race but basically like the premise of a good any percent manipulus run is just getting like a really good hidden power so that you can like yellow rourke without having to fight a lot of optionals so that you evolve into monferno or rourke and that's indeed what he got here a high power hidden power grass uh chimchar with good stats as well and uh not low encounters in the work split and carried that from there. So just a really good run. And sub one is quite insane for Manipolis. Pretty much all we got there. Um here is another Gen 4 Manipolis. Uh just a really insane run. This is Yaxo. Um the first sub 340 in hard cold any percent glitchless manipulus uh it's also the first sub 341 because it skipped that minute barrier um there was a thousand dollar bounty placed on whoever got this first sub 340 or 341 actually sub 341 and uh it only took two days after the bounty was announced to to, to claim that bounty it's a good stroke of luck um yeah, the sonar is really good. Uh, I believe like a low 108 Morty uh, combined with a 30 second cart, which is much above average or much below average uh, time to get carp. And the carp is also uh, pretty spectacular. Really high attack with adamant 28 IV um, and good speed as well. Um, yeah, and it like barely got the sub 340, but that's again a really insane barrier to get. So nice job by Yaxo here. Uh, here is the main category in 
the DSPSR. Uh, we have Worcester with a uh, world record in Soul Silver Glitch List again. Uh, it's actually got a few like small PBs, but this is the most recent one um, in 3.30.19. Uh, this fight that I have highlighted here is one of the craziest things that I've ever seen. Uh, it's just a really poor Jasmine fight that ends up with him like using all of Jasmine's hyper potions because he doesn't get like a crit or a spit F drop. Um, and then he ends up low rolling uh, the Steelix after. The first cyber potion, so at this point you're never really supposed to have like been at this stage in the fight, so he's out of shadow balls. So he has to struggle the Steelix, and in fact he has to struggle it twice in Super Potion Raikou. So that he doesn't die to struggle. Um it's just like the only way he could have won uh, given the given the lucky that he got. Um but yeah, this, the, it's, it's just funny that this ended up in a world record because besides this fight, the run was pretty much outstanding. Like legitimately 328 pace if it wasn't for this fight going so poorly. But yeah, Worcester's uh, still going. Still on sub 330. And lastly... For DSPSR this month, we have Minnow. He came back uh, after working on some route improvements for White 2. There are still things being found out. Um, mainly the the discovery of the uh, Grotto Candy route, uh, where you can spawn a rare candy in the uh, in the hidden grotto on Route 6. Um, it's a little bit of a detour, but it lets you not get a clown candy in Castellia City, which is takes a lot of time in itself, so ends up being like 20 seconds or so faster due to the Grotto Candy route. It changes a few fights, but it's not really like riskier. Uh, it does put a more strict constraint on the seed that you have to get, though, for Tepic, because... You have to manip the Grotto Candy to appear, which is like a low chance. Um, so, not a lot of seeds per DS, if you will. Um, this run itself was not, like, didn't have the best start ever. Like, it, because he got a third ball Sodic, which is like, kind of, really like, not what you're supposed to continue, but... You know, he, I guess he just wanted to play it out, and the rest of the run ended up being, like, pretty insane. He got, like, good 121 clay, uh, which is good even for the new route. Um, and he also got the the God Marshal, literally, like, the God Marshal once again in this, uh, in this PB. So it really solidified the 308 pace at this point. Um... One thing to note, or probably two things to note, is that there are two other strats that we have like been working on in White 2 that he did not implement in this run. Those two strats being Trainer Skip, which is a manip that you can do to... It's sort, of, it's sort of like Plasma Skip in Black and White 1 if you've been paying attention to that kind of stuff, but it's a lot harder because there's a lot of NPCs that affect the manip. And you're only skipping two trainers with uh, two phenomena, and it only ends up staying about, about 20 seconds. And if you fail it, then, you know, your run just like dies because failing it at all means that you have to fight the trainers still. So it kind of defeats the whole purpose. Um, so Minnow didn't do that uh, time save because it's, it's just a lot of pressure to do on a really good run. I, I don't believe that he has Trainers get routed. Uh, it's just something that like you kind of have to have routed and either commit to on a bad run or commit to on every run, which is something that runners like TTS have done. Um, but Minnow didn't do that. And then the other route improvement that can be done on any given run is uh, the Lucky Egg Unequip, 
which saves 20 seconds again. Um, basically, the premise of that strat is you take off the Lucky Egg on Excadrill at some point in, um, I believe, the Frigate section, or maybe before gets this, the final gets this fight. Um, and just because you gain less EXP, and you get like shorter text boxes when you gain EXP, because it doesn't say like, Skidrill gained a boosted EXP, it just says gained so-and-so EXP. Um, you save about like, 20 seconds just by EXP and text from that, so... It just makes like a few fights a little riskier. Um, but it, it is something that uh, runners can do, and Minnow just didn't do on this run because this run was just that good. Didn't absolutely need to do it, so he didn't. But yeah, there there is still stuff that you can do, but this run is still really insane. Despite all that. Is that everything for the DS? Yep. That's yeah. it. Solid. Uh, three guess. Uh, you didn't have anything. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, hopefully next month. Yeah, nothing for three DS, uh, but we do have a lot of stuff for the Switch. Um, first up is the only non Scarlet Violet run, uh, and this is Carlio getting a three twenty seven twenty five in Shining Pearl Japanese uh, glitchless. Um. Part of the time discrepancy between Japanese and English is uh, Japanese doesn't allow music to be turned off. Um, so when you compare this to the English with music on category, it's a lot closer. Um, don't know much about the, the run. Um, it is only a few seconds faster than the old record, um, also by Carlio, but um, Caro does have quite a bit of a lead above or you know ahead of second place. Um, so the, the run is definitely pretty good. Um, and I know they've been kind of all over the place uh, as a runner because they did like a Gen 1 through 9 kind of run. So it's cool to see them doing more than just the Scarlet Violet that we saw a couple months ago. Yeah, I just want to point out. by the way. Yeah, I was going to say, that like that spin just did not turn for so long. <laughs> yeah, it, it's actually kind of funny because, so in English, we allow you to do the repel trick to where you basically step off of the snow and your repel wears off and then you're allowed to just keep walking because um, like it stops you on the ice uh, and so you can shortcut that entire puzzle. That's another thing that's not allowed in the Japanese glitchless run. Um, so... That, that is what we are avoiding, is basically there's that one spinner there. There's no required trainers. There's one spinner. Uh, but spinners in this game can be a thing. You all love it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so moving on, this is the first of many Scarlet Violet runs. Uh, we're probably not going to go into in-depth on any one particular one just because they are a lot of these are essentially due to was the patch out for last podcast i think it was um so basically there was a so. switch there was a switch update that um greatly improved how the game performs um so you're going to basically be seeing records in every either every category or almost every category across both languages uh it's it's pretty ridiculous. Um, Halk specifically has been on a tear when it comes to any percent, uh, nabbing both the English record that you see here and the Japanese record. Um, it is worth mentioning that this English record, I do think, is a better quality run than the old record before the patch. Um, just in terms of, uh, based on in-game time alone, was thinking that the patch probably saves around two or so minutes um, and this is now three minutes faster than the old time so uh definitely great to see first sub 520 um and yeah other than that um we saw one of the downsides on this fight here uh missing that range on leafion um but 
other than that, the, the run was just solid all the way through. Uh, no real major time losses. The only thing was it was a Tangled Feet Flamigo as opposed to Scrappy. Um, and that just loses a bit of time and movement early on. So overall, very good run. Um, then this is the Japanese record uh, with a 521.30. Um, this one's only about a minute faster than the old Japanese record, uh, so it probably has room to improve, and Halk, I believe, is still grinding this, so uh, we will likely see an improvement by next month. Um, main drawback of this run was early on, uh, there was a lot of encounters uh, in the movement section. I think his comment said there were five encounters, um, which, with overworld encounters, encounters should be, for the most part, avoidable. Um, so those are things that can get cleaned up. And then, um, yeah, this was the, the first run of his that, that beat the Japanese record. So, um, I think we'll see another improvement there. Why does it seem like the great, the game fees got like Vaseline over it or something? Um, I think, was this? Someone posted a clip of someone's game just being completely blurry for no reason. And that may have been this. Uh, it probably corrects yeah, itself <laughs> uh, at some point, but... It's, it's just a known thing with the game? Uh, known? I don't know. Uh, okay. It's apparently a thing. <laughs> uh, I know there's some weird lighting effects that can happen. So it wouldn't surprise me if there's some weird blurry filter that can get added and not removed appropriately you know what okay i'm too curious later on does it clear it please yeah that that seems clear yeah okay that's just all right good C cool game yeah <laughs> very well made absolutely um all right uh, for single story categories, this is Crisis getting the Path of Legends record with a fi uh, 51 19. Um, this one's also pretty improvable, um, according to their own account. Uh, they died to Tatsugiri here, um, and they also missed the Dondozo range, uh, but otherwise, it was a overall pretty solid time. Um, Crisis does seem to think that a 50 minute time should be doable, um, but sub 50 probably not on the current update. Would probably need another performance patch to get that. But this is a this is a category that kind of sucks to grind just because the hardest or the the two fights that can go the worst are just right at the end. So. All right. Um, next up is uh, Yi Hamaki. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, with the Path of Legends glitch or glitched record, uh, with a 48:12. This was the first run, sort of showcasing um, a new set of glitches. Uh, if you could actually rewind back right before we just like right before where we are. Um, this is basically the one of the main glitches. Um, it's rare candy duping. You use the let's go feature to um, pick up a rare candy while you're like a little bit out of range. And you can see here he's got 105 rare candies. Um, so <laughs> that's pretty busted. Um, and especially in this game, because you can use rare candies uh, all at the same time. Uh, you don't even have to use each one individually like you do in previous gens. You can just use all of them up to 99. And I think he uses another one later on to evolve into Skeleturge as well. Um, but yeah, so we're not, I'm not exactly sure how everything works, uh, or anything like that. Uh, I do know that this is only possible, I believe on the earlier versions of the game, like 1.0. Um, so we will likely have to have some sort of version patch discussion at some point, uh, once this gets looked at further. Um, cause I think as of right now, he is basically the only one, um, who's done anything with it. Um, there's also another set of glitches that involve skipping the Titan phases. I don't know exactly the best time to look forward to. Uh, let me see if, let me open up my screen. See if I can find. 
In the meantime, I will say the patch discussion will surely be very fun. Um, if you want to join the uh, the sort or the uh, the Switch Discord, um, if you have any opinions on that, and you're planning to run the game ideally as well. But yeah, I I do the command, but the bot's down, so uh, I I could actually just find that. I guess it's gonna be similar to the how it's handled in Sun Shield, right? Where it's just like different leaderboards for different versions of the game, right? I would it imagine might be a, so. It they might only... be a little more nuanced yeah. than that. Um But yeah, it, it'll probably be something similar. Um I think the big thing I, I don't wanna I don't wanna speak my own opinions on this, but one of the topics that was brought up um is basically having a leaderboard for this but only allowing physical. Um, because you can't get 1.0 digital anymore. So uh, if you have a physical copy, you could, you know, have a Switch that's never had the game before and never download the update, uh, and it would work the same, but you wouldn't be able to do that with digital. So um, but I, so I think there's maybe a little bit more to it, but yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is actually a perfect time. So if you fast forward basically through this fight, so normally um, the Titan fights have two phases to them. Um, you... Oh, that's and we just watched the fight so it's going to be a one turn thing <laughs> oh um <laughs> yeah because you're level 99 um so normally there are two phases to a titan fight you do one phase you go somewhere else you do the other phase and then you start a cutscene. um and so here uh they're actually going to go past the fight um i'm not sure the exact details of this you basically send off crocolore it drops down uh, you fly away, and when you fly back, I think you also have to trigger the cutscene. Like I said, I don't know the exact details behind this. I just I know the end result of it. Um, so you fly away, uh, and then it brings you basically into the cutscene after you beat the Titan. So. Uh, I believe this is only done on two of the five Titans, and it's possible on a third. Um, but I want to say that there were some issues with that third one. So there's there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, it'll be really interesting to see if any of this stuff gets sort of brought into other categories. Um, specifically, the rare candy thing should be applicable to like every category. Um, but the the Titans may only be for or this titan phase stuff may only happen for the uh path of legends and like treasure hunt any percent categories yeah, fair. also i posted the switch is called chat i don't know what that first thing was i clicked copy text and it just copied the entirety the entirety of the the post so it had all the different discords uh, so how have fun figuring out that one. <laughs> if you click on that first link, um, it should be a po it should be a Pokemon Discord. Which one? Who knows? Um, but yeah, got to the next run. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is um, first of two records um, by Shu. Uh, first one here is Path of Legends Japanese record with a one forty two thirty six. Um. Not really sure um, anything that really went wrong in this one uh, compared to like crises from before. Uh, again, time discrepancy is Japanese starts from the beginning of the game where uh, English runs. We start at the um, end of the school section. Um, but this is I had it up earlier. One second. This is a. About a minute. Um, faster than the old Japanese record. Um, so given that this is a shorter category than any percent is, this is probably either on par or better um, than the old record uh, when you factor in the update, changing the time um, and everything. So good run there. Um, and then we also have a Starfall Street record um, in Japanese by Shu as well. Uh, with a 218.16. Uh, this one's a little bit closer to the old record, so this one's probably improvable. Um, 
I'm not actually sure. Iron, do you know what route they use for Japanese Starfall? Is it also the Quaquaville route? Um, I think so. We'll, we'll find out here. Yeah. So yeah, it's, I think it's what we've seen for for Path as well, where you would use the starter, but because you don't have the benefit of resetting for as strict stats, you just run a slightly wider range of stats, but go a little higher level. Uh, so that, I don't know what the IVs are on this duck, but I'm assuming it's not like a top of the line duck that we see right, on some yeah. people's save files, but good enough to do the run at a slightly higher level. All right. Um, and then the final record for Scarlet Violet. Um, this is Crisis getting the Victory Road record uh, with a 212.41. Uh, this is one of the two categories, I think, that we saw a new record for last month uh, with Truly getting a 212. Um, so uh, Crisis taking back the record. Um, had a bit of a hiccup near the end of the run with some shopping. Um, basically, uh, just misremembered what he had to buy and everything uh, but ended up figuring out and getting it done uh, according to crisis thinks that a 211 would likely be doable um but probably isn't going to grind for it anytime soon uh, fair. Fair, yeah. fair and, indeed uh oh. and that that is it for scarlet violet uh hopefully a lot of these records are either now better than the uh, pre-update, or at least a lot closer to the pre-update, um, I would say, just based on the times alone. Um, so we will probably not see as many Scarlet Violet records next month. <laughs> or maybe we will. Who knows? It's definitely possible. Um, but now onto the side games. So starting off with Heresy VGC's uh, Stadium Gym Leader Castle Round 1 emulator second place time. With a 132.30. It's stadium. It's just impressive that people can finish runs of this game. <laughs> honestly. And for this last fight in particular. They actually hit two horn drills. Uh, to finish the run. So pretty high pending as well there. A massive PB as well from the looks of it. I mean they're 8 minutes ahead going into the split. And by the end of it they're over 11 minutes. So... Yeah, really good. Well done there. Um, I'm going to go uh, beating Amoeba's uh, previous world record uh, on the Defeat Rayquaza, uh, Defeat Rayquaza Sapphire field um, by 35 seconds. So this is now a 1320. Like, that's a really good run. <laughs> um, like such a short run to be able to be the previous world record by 35 seconds and from the sounds of it it's just by playing really well um just like the boss fights going well not much bad rng so uh yeah congrats on the go because there's been a fair few runs uh in the past from Anigo which have been like second place getting close uh but yeah finally managing to beat amoeba with a really really good run of that as well PMD is back uh, after a few months uh, off the podcast and Eponymous is the one to bring it back with Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time or Darkness, I couldn't figure out which one it was, my apologies. Beat Darkrai No Wonder Mail Japanese Emulator World Record, a 7.08.57. Uh, Lee's Pikachu and uh, has Total Dial as a partner. Uh, apparently Pikachu is not amazing for the any percent part of it. Um, but it did decently well enough to keep it close for the uh, the B dark right side of the run, and they just a, a, like saving ten minutes on Aegis Cave uh, was able to get the dark right world record. So uh, congrats to Eponymous who is in the chat right now. Um, Etiquette, you're better to talk about this than I am. Yeah, I made a joke comment about it on the last podcast, and here we are. Um, yeah, so this is Detective Pikachu Returns. Uh, new record with a 223.32. Um, I actually did get a 221 or a 220, I think it was. Um, but I never submitted it because I want to get a sub-220. I just haven't had the time. Um, the run's cute. It's it's a lot of basically just do the right thing at the right time. 
Um, there's effectively no RNG to it. Um, but I thought it was interesting. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really based uh, comment that I can see in the yeah, chat. Yeah, I was there. just about to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> A very yeah. polarizing comment, I would say. Um, but yeah, no, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. I did find a couple of small things. Um, I don't, I didn't have it implemented in this run, um, but there are a couple of like auto scrollery type sections where, um, if you move ahead to, let me see if I can find it. Um, it was actually a section that we saw last time. So if you move ahead to like 41 30 on the timer. Uh, on the timer, uh, you go there. And you like the roughly, animals. yeah, right about yeah. here. Um, so there are a couple sections in the game that, that are like this, uh, where you got like a, a guard type Pokemon or a person, um, that you are trying to avoid their line of sight. Um, it's effectively an auto scroller, however, uh, there are ways that you can speed it up. Um, I did find that the path that they take is always the same but if you fail it twice they take a different path and that path is usually faster so um the time it takes to fail it twice ends up being less than the time it would take to just do it the normal way um so this is one of them that can be sped up as well as i think there's two or three other ones uh in later levels that was the major speed tech that i found um aside from that like i said it's mostly just do the right thing at the right time uh, and ask the right questions, figure out like the minimum amount of stuff to do in order to just get through the levels. It's a cool game, though. Yeah. Fair, fair. Uh, so not done. Uh, there is ROM hacks, which go back to Iron for that. Yeah, so this is uh, Dullahan um, running Infinite Fusion Modern, uh, any percent five version 5.1. So when we mean modern, there's actually two versions. I guess there's technically more, but the two that are, are speed ran are modern and um, classic. So classic is just the original 151. Uh, this game is pretty much based on Johto or El Canto. And then um, there is an option to uh, sort of like an E4 round two, you'd see in Fire Leaf Green, where you can go to Johto and do uh, the be gyms there. And I think you beat red or blue or something at the end. I don't remember which, um, but um, the, uh, the classic only has the first 150 mons, and modern adds... How many are there, actually? It adds a lot more. Let me see here. Uh, doesn't specifically say, but there's there's more there's more, there's more more than just the original 150. I don't exactly know how many, but you can see there's some Gen 3. Um, this uh, this uh, route uses a, bla a Blaziken base. There's a pretty much... Um, there's special like items you can use to fuse Pokemon together. Some of the trainers you see have fused Pokemon, some don't. Um, there's a lot of activity in trying to improve this. There's obviously a lot of updates as well. This game's still being worked on actively um, in terms of development. So there's a lot of changes that are, are happening here as well. Um, and if you're interested in seeing a run of this in a marathon, there actually is going to be one coming up. It's not on our list, but it'll be on Hotfix this Friday at about 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So uh, if you're interested in ch checking at that out, um, it's a pretty cool run. Uh, it'll be a really cool uh, showing of it. Uh, but yeah, this is the modern run anyway, so um, I'm not too sure exactly the details, but uh, this only does the uh, the Kanto portion because it's uh, about an hour and 20 minutes long. So you add about an hour for the, uh, for the Johto part. Uh, but yeah, Blaziken plus Umbreon seems to be the strat. And then I think... It's then switched over to uh, Bisharp Fusion later, so. Yeah, I'll um, just show that. There we go. Oh, geez. It's terrifying. Yep. But yeah, the uh, kind of the sky's the limit with these. There's lots of uh, <laughs> there's ridiculous. lots of options you can do. The um, This runs on um, Essentials, so it's kind of like a standalone uh, app that you can download for your computer. It's not an emulator or anything like that. Uh, and then obviously there's a lot of there's like speed up and whatnot, which um, you see in a lot of these games as well, which makes it's a built in feature. So it's nothing. Uh, it's not like using the speed up button on an emulator or anything like that, but it's uh, it allows you to play the game pretty quick. Uh, obviously, movement becomes very, very difficult. 
Yeah, yeah. Then, last but not least. Yeah, so we were talking a little bit about earlier. This is actually a really nice sort of... Um, we got a nice introduction to it with the... Uh, with the Fire Leaf Green glitched category. This is the Fire Leaf Green Plus ROM hack. Um, so I... This is my run of Diploma. I, you catch, catch all 150 Pokemon. Um, and previous record with without glit, the glitch, um, the male glitch specifically, was about six hours and 50 minutes long. So this is this saves about an hour and a half. On that, the downside is I have to duplicate about 500 items in the entire run. So I end up buying about 600 pieces of mail, and there's about there's a few extras. And pretty much the strategy is just duplicating rare candies, duplicating master balls, um, duplicating nuggets because you need to buy all the game corner mons as well. So um, you duplicate a bunch of nuggets, sell them all, and uh, buy a bunch of coins. And so yeah, it's a similar strategy. Um, we're pretty much just going to blitz to Mr. Mime. I'm actually, what I, I instead do, I don't catch the Abra, I just buy it. Um, because you have double EXP, um, because that's a feature of the game, you can just blitz everything with War Turtle Blastoise. It's pretty straightforward, and then just do the Mr. Mime, kind of setting up the mail glitch, and kind of Ananen touched on it as well, where they were duplicating uh, the HP up like six times and the, the protein once. Or maybe it was just the one protein that was given out. I don't think that was duped at all, actually. No, I, no, yeah, I it was only one protein. Yeah. Um, we're just going to be duplicating a, a ton of items here. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm actually... I'm not too sure exactly what I'm doing. If you want to go find the, the double battle fight. So in terms of this fight, what I'm actually doing is I actually don't have to worry about disobedience because I actually fight... Actually, if you want to go back to the hideout-ish, it's kind of hard to find that. The, uh, that's Sylvco. No, that's that was, too early. That's a double battle if you want me to go there. Uh, you oh. could, yeah. Just before that, if you can. Um, so the reason I mentioned when I was talking to Anna and Anna about Encore, I actually got Encore. Um, but what the reason why is I believe that because this game you can set the train the difficulty to easy mode, the trainers are all lower level, and so one of these two um, annoying pink blobs has Encore, and my Chiding got Encored, so it couldn't use knockoff right away. So I ended up wasting a lot of turns to uh, to wait for that to wear out. So that was quite irritating. But I don't have to worry about disobedience because what I end up doing is I end up using the Mr. Mime because I get the Abra late. I actually just end up beating the Rocket Hideout um, and the uh, and Erica with um, Mr. Mime, and so I get the the uh, the badge from Erica, which gives me uh, obedience to level 50, and then I don't have to worry about disobedience on the double battle. So that saves a ton of time here. So yeah, so the gist of it is just do a lot of duplication, get a lot of rare candies uh, and master balls once you get the master balls. So I kind of blitz to Sylph as well um, immediately after getting the Pokey Flute. Um, and um, yeah, pretty much. Actually, no, I don't do. Yeah, I do the Pokey. I get the Pokey Flute, but then I do Sylph to get the master ball, and then that allows me to start catching everything from there with master balls. Uh, so I duplicate about 70 master balls in the run. Uh, so as you can probably guess from um, anyone who's played this game, there's one part of the run where you still are uh, can be a victim to brutal RNG. Does anyone want to guess in the call who the, where that section might be? Squad Manip. Safari. Oh, yeah, there's that. There, there is that too. Yeah, <laughs> you could do a Manipolis, but anywhere, anyone else? Safari zone. That is correct. So yeah, so we cannot we cannot do master balling anything in the safari zone. So this is pretty much the major reset point now. Um, this run was actually insane. I got the um, pretty much you go in, you go pretty much go twice, two to three times. The first time you're going just to get surf, and you want to get one of the rare spawns. In this case, Chansey. I kind of based a lot of this route on um, Shep's um, uh, effectively the catch them all. Uh, leaf green root um so this root run is based a lot on that so pretty much i'm just i'm just camping for chancy um or i run out of balls whichever comes first but my goal is to get surf beat koga then i go back inside catch the rest so i'm only catching three rare spawns chancy kangaskhan and tauros and i actually got the one percent kangaskhan in this area this is area three i believe where tauros usually is 
Kangaskhan is a 1% encounter, so I actually ended up getting this Kangaskhan, which is crazy. Um, and then I ended up going back in, I think, for one more trip and got a pretty fast Tauros as well. So it was a, it was a really fast Safari Zone, as you can see by my splits. And yeah, you're this just is... kind of candying your Blastoise to 100. That's your main battler. You don't have to worry about gaining EXP or anything like that. And you just kind of blitz all the fights. And uh, bear candy, a ton of stuff at the end. This is going to get beaten, probably. Like, maybe not with this route, but there's like... <clears throat> People are looking into Glitch catch out for like uh, vanilla for a leaf green. And yeah. apparently there's some sort of method where you can like... Corrupt them on in a way where you can catch enemy train as Pokemon. Oh. And Jeez. that just like that just wins you the fight as well. And I don't I don't know how exactly it would work, but it's like you would you would just like dupe a lot of Master Balls and then just catch like stuff you usually couldn't like get or it would take a lot of time until you get them. Yeah, that sounds like, like a game shark code, actually. There's one that like, you could use to catch trainer mons. <laughs> oh. Um Interesting that you, you, I don't know if you, um, yeah, now that you mentioned that, I forgot to indicate, um, this run doesn't really benefit from doing arbitrary code execution, like you see in any percent for Fire Leaf Green. You actually cannot do the exact same uh, ace in f vanilla Fire Leaf Green in this game. Uh, there's some code that's changed slightly, and you just end up uh, crashing the game. Uh, it just doesn't work exactly the same way. Um, and I don't have the coding experience to figure this out, so someone's going to have to work on figuring this out for this game. Uh, that's not me. <laughs> so if anyone watching wants to try that, I'd be very interested in talking to you. Because the any percent... Now, I, haven't, I don't know how much faster it would be doing the standard... Um, the, new, the new route that Ananan has, the new record, the 119. But I did actually kind of roughly wrote out what we would do with the EV... Um, set up the 83 HP and the 20 protein or the 20 attack rather and um, I believe the time would be around 55 minutes for any percent um, which saves about 20 30 minutes on uh, on record in this and with the new with the new method where you don't have to do the specific EV training it would be even better so um, we are very interested to see because it would be a nice short category but uh, catch them all is still pretty fun. Or the, uh, the the diploma, I guess, here. Oh yeah, this is actually kind of funny here, this section here. So I was actually just evolving Voltorb with... Um... Oh, it's not this one. That's interesting. Oh yeah, it doesn't show it here. But I actually do catch one of the... Uh... One of the static electrodes here, which is something I wasn't doing for the first little bit of running this. I don't know why, but it's a nice, easy, <laughs> a nice, easy free catch. So, but yeah, here's Zapdos. No problem when you have 57 Master Balls. Um, this does does this does use quite a bit of repel tricks as well. Um, so I notice I have you notice I have Mr. Mime on the top here, and I have Mr. Mime on the top to force the Electabuzz to spawn because it's a rare encounter. But uh, it uses a lot of the classic tricks we see in the other categories for vanilla and then it uh, obviously does the glitch and it uses the male glitch quite a lot <laughs> anyway that's it for me yeah. um, unless you guys have more questions uh, it's the only thing on my end and this could have applied to, uh, to like the focus topic earlier because like with the repel just like doing the what's it called like the uh, T turning on the same spot. Does that lower repel count in these games? No. Okay. No, there's no steps. So that would be that's kind of that would be really bad if it did because Safari Zone would uh, would take a long time because you'd get booted out because you only have 600 steps to work with in Safari Zone for each visit. So yeah. you actually would you'd run into a lot of issues. Yeah. Very different. But yeah, a lot of camping. It, it can take a while to get things to spawn, but uh, it's pretty rewarding once you, you get everything you need. Yeah. That was good. In that case, I uh, don't think if there is any more questions, we can uh, go into the upcoming marathon runs. 
Yeah, I guess we'll start with this one. Um, on the 16th of December, um, at Dreamhack Hanover, uh, Genesis is going to run red or blue, one of them. Uh, 80% no item underfill. I feel like that's blue. That normally run on blue. I think I it's would guess so. Yeah. I would think so, yeah. Yeah. Well, if it's not run on blue, it's run on red. Uh, but that'll be on the 16th of December at uh, 10 past 12. All these times are in UK time. So just remember that. Um, agenda RSPG, uh, Zan, uh, Zan9BR is going to be running the Fire Red Leaf Green and 80% Glitchless on the 16th of December at 1pm. And then that's followed by Kasiev running Stadium 2 Gym Leader Castle Round 1 on the Switch. Um, at 15.45. Winter Pride 2023, uh, Lady Starstream uh, is going to be uh, running Let's Go Pikachu 80% on the 17th of, the, uh, 17th of December at around quarter past 10 in the evening. Really, really long upon 7. There's only the one Pokemon run this time around, and it's all the way down on the 20th of December at 22.11 in the morning and that's going to be run by Phantom5800 uh, Poke Park We All Friends uh, so if you like Poke Park make sure to tune in for that one and then last but not least RTA in Japan Winter 2023 uh, two runs here the first one is just after 6 p.m. in the evening on the 27th of December, it's uh, Carolio running Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, 80% glitchless. And then towards the back end of the uh, the event on the 31st of December at like 6 past 4 in the morning is the exact time. Uh, Buster Poke uh, running Hard Gold Soul Silver Battle Factory level. 50, uh, I think it's silver print. Um, I couldn't really tell from the translation that it gave me. <laughs> 215 estimate, it looks like. Yeah, 215 estimate. So, it, it's probably so, it, I'm pretty sure it's Battle Factory at the minimum. So, enjoy that. Yeah if you like that type of thing <laughs> um, but yeah that is all the upcoming marathon specific runs that I could find uh, Ian you mentioned though that um, coming up on do you say Friday? yeah Friday at 10pm uh, eastern time we have a special um, there's a special GDQ hotfix show um, what's it called? I'm trying to remember what it's called bear with me here uh Parallel Universe is what it's called. Um, so that's going to be... That's, that's a show based on sort of... Um, modifications to games or... Fan-made versions of games that are... Um, not a f Well, that are very different than what we would nor normally expect to see. And so we'll see a couple of runs there. I'm actually going to be running a, a ROM hack... Um, called Pocket Gaiden. Um, I ran that three years ago. Um, and it's about a 40 minute run. They needed a quick, really short run, so I, uh, I volunteered. And then uh, we have Alimra, who's going to be running, um, we mentioned before, Infinite Fusion uh, Classic. I think he's going He's going to be doing Beat uh, all the way to Blue, I believe. Let me just confirm that real quick. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Yeah, Classic Beat Gold. All right. There we go. Sounds good. So it's gold, not blue, and not red. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> that is all good. Yeah, 10 p.m. Eastern time on Friday. That would be 10 p.m. Yeah, not UK time. So that would be like 3 in the morning for you, Jordan. Yeah, it, not not an ideal time for the UK or anywhere <laughs> in Europe. Um, if you happen to be awake, though, tune in. But yeah. I think with that we can go on to the leaderboard roundup. So as always, 
If there's a particular run that stands out, feel free to mention it, otherwise. Uh, yeah, we'll start with uh, Pokemon Red, 80% glitchless, uh, Jadiwi in 4th with a 145.06. Very good time. And then Anne, 30 seconds as well with a 147.51. Yeah, I got a kind of dead red. Then I got distracted by Fire Leaf Green glitched. So I'm stuck with glitched, luckily. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Uh, do, do, do. uh, Primal for yellow glitchless, uh, not classic. Uh, 14 for the 155.44. Pretty good. I actually, we got NSC record in red. We didn't really mention that, up, did we? No, we did not. Uh, but that was mentioned not, not in the last podcast. Podcasts. I care about something. Put a bit of over. Yeah, because th it was on the day. It was on the day of the podcast, I think. Was it? Ah, okay. I can, have, I can just have a quick look to, to look. Yeah, it was on the day of the last podcast. Because we did it on the Sunday because of the. The uh, Argos also of the tournament. Hello, Etienne. Um. To do. Uh, yeah, Yugi Sai in fifth for uh, the gold 80% glitchless on Japanese, a 314.02. Uh, Icy, oh wait, did we mention Icy with the emulator run? I forget. Uh, don't I don't think, think so. we did. Not. Anyway, oh, yeah. uh, Icy with the emulator world record for, uh, for Sapphire, a 151.02. 58. Oh, one thing to mention about this is that there's actually like a different route now for Sapphire Glitched where they don't candy to level 100 and they also use Hydro Bomb. So it's like kind of like more traditional where like you're doing fights as Tentacruel and you're not like gonna win them for free because you're relying on Hydro Bomb to like save the time for, for candying. That's pretty much the gist of it kind of a hospital route, but does produce better times. Yeah. yeah. That's that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah they also do um, like a different tentament up now. Like they do a different double battle and I haven't looked at it exactly but it's just a little bit different early game pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um Pirate Leaf Green, uh any percent uh, for second place, because we already, I mean, you've already, actually, is that, no, yeah, that's not your time that yeah, we showed that's, earlier. That's the old so, route one, yeah. Probably gonna get verified soon, I guess, but it's 119 for the emulator bot. I think Chip is gonna improve his run as well. Yeah. He also still did this with the old route, so, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Um, at least as of when I ran this, starting at, like, just after six, uh, oh, I say just have to say, around four hours ago I kicked it off. Um, Kadir in second with a one twenty six thirteen, and then Warax in third with a one twenty nine oh six that were currently verified. Uh, uh, Black White two affected ashes in ninth with a three twelve forty. Uh, Etienne in fifteenth for. For X any percent a three forty eight twenty one back to back PB as well so congrats there. Uh, uh Tisval uh in ninth for any percent of Mega Ruby on emulator a three oh four forty three. Uh, not a name I'm familiar with, but uh maybe they've been around for other games and I've just never noticed. Still though, congrats nonetheless. Top 10 there. Yeah. A few diploma runs this month. Uh, but before that, actually, uh, in 20th, uh, 20th, Yossarian with a 80% uh, uh, no mount skips on Eevee. Uh, 30648. Congrats there. But yeah. Um, quite a few pretty top diploma runs. Uh, both including Randall. All of them, aside from the bottom one uh, on this list, include Randall. Yeah, uh, Randall has been busy. 
There could have been another one, but I haven't submitted my time yet. But I did one with Randall. That was worse than all of those. Ah. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Randall gunning for the uh, the most diploma runs, trying to... Uh, probably maybe sounds right, a yeah. fair bit away from Joker, but... Making progress. Um, they are also in fifth for uh, all obtainable Pokemon on Eevee. Kick and run uh, with a 515.59. Yeah, they actually um, just got a 507, I think it was. Um, oh, wow. Like okay. That That's yeah. getting very close to you, Eskip. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if they did mount skips. And if they did not do mount skips, then it's either equal or better than my run two. Okay. You feeling the pressure? <laughs> I no interest in doing that category, like grinding it again, so... Bully not, fair. A <laughs> uh, couple of Soul Shield runs. Um, like Morgrim in third with 80% shield English on turbo, 1.2 plus patch, a 411.42, and then uh, Tower of Two Fists uh, from Greta. Uh, Geta, she threw specifically, a 126.21. On shield. So, Let's go. On, on shield as well. Congrats to them. Uh, do, do, do. We mentioned Cairo earlier. Uh, Legends Arceus, uh, Agpak, with a 80% Japanese time in fifth place, a 347.05. Not many Legends Arceus runs, so good to see one of them. Uh, yep, many Scarlet Violet runs, uh, partially down to, probably mainly down to the new patch. But uh, just mentioning some of them that have not already been mentioned. Uh, Watermate in third with a 526.44 and 80% Japanese glitch list. Um, Co Comet? Co Comet, maybe? Um, but Path of Legends third place on Japanese glitch list, a 14416. Uh, Teal. Uh, was it? There was no Teal Mask was there? Well, that we've mentioned. Mm, interesting. Uh, but yeah, um, no. Manashiro, uh, Ui, Ui, uh, with the Teal Mask Japanese second place glitch list time of 2.34.23. And then a couple of treasure hunt runs that we didn't mention because miscellaneous category, I guess. They're hidden. They're not, they're not very visible. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Hulk with the world record, a 3.48.50. Edeka in second with a 350-40. Good run? Uh, it was okay. It was on Violet. I was just testing the waters with the new patch. Fair enough. A uh, few stadium runs. Um, third place on the Switch for the Shagalicious. A 133-22. Uh, and then for the emulator side of things, uh, Reese in third with a 133.11 in fourth Demogi with a 133.28 and then in twelfth uh, Charlie Stradlin with a 135.04 uh, Tenth place uh, on Pokemon Snap uh, in 100% for Salius Arclis on the N64 24.29 Fair amount of Pokemon Pinball uh, runs, more than you would normally see in a month. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Mystery Dungeon Red Blue Rescue Team, eponymous in 8th for any percent, no quick save, no windmill, English on emulator, a 253.20. And then also world record in a miscellaneous category for eponymous for Mystery Dungeon's Explorers of Sky. All special episodes, a 255.38. Congrats there. Um, there should be category extensions. I believe I included them. I did, but it didn't register them. Oh well, never mind. <laughs> uh, in that case, last but not least, we'll mention because it's the only one that hasn't been mentioned here uh, earlier on. Uh, Crystal Clear, one badge glitch list, 2.5. Old Goldazoa with a world record time of a 2.37. Uh, 
So congratulations there. And with that, that is the end of this episode of the podcast. Uh, I don't know. Thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, Edo Kurtz, thank you for being on the podcast. Ian, thank you for being on the podcast. And Tucker, thank you for being on the podcast. You get individual ones this time. Thank you. And yeah, so... And Jordan, thank you for being on the podcast. Uh, yes, um... A couple of things to say before I have one last thing to mention. Um, the next episode of the podcast should be on the 6th of January. Um... I don't believe there's any tournaments that will be happening, so that should be it. But obviously, it'll be down to the hosts. Um, and it will be a new season, season four. So, look forward to that. But as part of that, um, one thing that will be changing for next month uh, and for next season is that I am stepping down. I'm stepping down from the podcast. Uh, uh, when was, like, what was it? It was... February 2021 when we first started floating the idea of uh, bringing the podcast back, something like that. Sounds about yeah. right. Yeah. So, uh, like especially, if, like, at least from my end, especially like the original plan just for me was to help bring the podcast back. I was not planning to be a host. I was, um, even like, if I could even go back to like the very first one we did where it was like the handover episode with Amoeba hosting and Back when it was Edica, Iron, and Skoa on there. Yep. I was in the background, uh, running tech for it, being silent, had no mic, and we figured <laughs> out that was not ideal. <laughs> Especially when I think it was Coliseum that came up, and I was just trying to explain everything to them, and no one, no one on the stream could hear me, because obviously I was not meant to be heard. So, yeah, ended up posting at that point. It's been great. I really enjoyed it. Uh, as someone who doesn't normally tend to like speak things, uh, speak words, you can tell as I try and display this why I don't. Um, yeah, it was a, uh, it was very fun. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the past almost three years of doing this, but uh, it is time, at least for me, uh, to kind of like push it back. So, like, well, not push it back. That's not the right term. But to let them carry on, because at this point, I don't really bring too much, uh, in my opinion, at least to this, other than tech. Uh, which that's going to be fun for them to figure out. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually speaking on that note, um, if anyone is interested, though, in uh, helping out with tech, um, feel free to either still mention myself, because I'm still going to be around, um, just in general. I'm still a PSR TV admin. Um, I'm ideally uh, I will always say ideally because plans do change but I would like to still be working on stuff as well but yeah um, either message myself or message any of the uh, the current hosts Edicate Iron Hooker there's probably yeah, some and, more and, and you don't need to be hosting as well I know Jordan yeah. indicated that he initially joined just to do tech if you want to do that uh, that's totally fine um, we'd love to have anyone who's interested wants to do that if you want to host that's even better but not required um so yeah just reach out to any one of us and yeah thanks jordan so much for everything you've done uh for the podcast um you've done a lot for psr in general over the last few years and you're going to continue to, to do some some things but i understand we understand that you uh it's been a lot and uh definitely uh definitely uh we definitely appreciate everything you've done yes i i'm looking forward to having a bit of rest <laughs> um, and and to be fair, like the the I like as like if needed as well, I am definitely still around to help with the podcast. Um, I, it, maybe if I even get back to speedrunning at some point, that'd be nice. Uh, and I get a world record, I'd happily be on as well if uh, <laughs> if needed. That might be a bit of a push currently, though. Uh, I'm a bit washed up, I'd say at this point, but we'll see. But yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, but yeah, I. Oh, I guess one last thing as well. Um, kind of like in the vein of uh, hosting, 
if you're interested in on the um because we obviously we used to have highlight reels during the breaks um, yeah if you uh if you are wanting to help out on that side of things uh paid of course as well um feel free to reach out to again myself or any other podcast hosts and yeah if you're interested on um, interested on the editing side of things for that but yeah is there anything else that uh that i may have forgotten to mention oh actually there is um a couple of thank yous obviously thank you to the the hosting this with me etiquette iron Tucker. and then also thank you to scoa as well for hosting uh back when the podcast first came back uh that helping that transition so uh just it's just it's fun to have scoa scoa's great and also scoa just turning up as well just randomly well not randomly he would get pbs and come on still anyway but uh you know what I mean. And then also, thank you to Amoeba uh, for actually passing this over to myself. Uh, Currently, the host, you, you're great. You you don't need me. <laughs> like, you're going to do a great job. Uh, you will carry on even doing a great job. Uh, but yeah. There's probably going to be less tech issues as well, uh, especially given the start of this podcast. <laughs> I had to had to get one more issue in, uh, but yeah, I think with that, I don't think there's anything else to say. So I hope you all have a good rest of your day or evening wherever you are. Stay safe, take care, and goodbye. <laughs>